Hey, Michael Matt here. You tired of those annoying ads cluttering up our YouTube videos? We are too. Start watching our show at the totally ads free remnant-tv.com. And I asked ChatGPT, summarize the text and tell me now, based on our discussion, how will the new era, the intelligent era, look like? And I read you the text. Envisioning a future propelled by the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, we see a new dawn of human civilization, one that harmonizes technology with the deepest needs and aspirations of humanity. Oh, God help us. You're going to just, yeah, just cut, cut. I can't take any more of this decrepit old dinosaur. I really can't. I mean, look at him go. The, the great and powerful field marshal getting all old and crotchety like old and crotchety guys do. Uh, obviously afraid of death and consulting his little computerized oracle at Delphi on how he could maybe live forever, you know? Now, here's, and again, I want to close on this. This, this is what these guys simply do not understand. Uh, first of all, nobody cares. We actually like being human, Klaus. We really don't care. We, we, you got nothing for us, nothing at all. Uh, but I think it's very important on a serious note to acknowledge and to, to, to um, defend against what they're doing from the point of view of humanity. Because what do they do for the past, for the two years over COVID? You know, what was that all about? The mask and everything. Dehumanizing, right? They completely dehumanize. It's an experimentation and dehumanization. And you know why? I suspect the reason that they're so interested in dehumanizing us is because they fear humanity. Because humanity, like religion, like, like belief in God, like faith, always is resilient, always comes back, right? So they want to permanently change the humanity, the fuels with the digital identity and all this stuff, right? They're trying to, to mess that up in all of us and we got to defend against it. So for example, when we go out for a coffee with a friend, Klaus, we are not trying to randomly just fill our bellies with an arbitrary substance, in this case, coffee. I'm just gonna go drink a bunch of coffee. You know what I mean? What we're actually doing by going out to coffee with a friend, we're having a fundamentally human moment. And the, hum the human encounter is much more important than the coffee, right? I used to be a bartender years ago. I was a bartender. I worked in a piano bar in Virginia. And I, and I would sometimes actually give my drinks for free to good customers. And yes, I actually saw the manager give me and the piano man, a guy named Dave, would give him a smile on a Saturday night because you know what? He knew it was us. They were coming to see to forget about life for a while. You get it? Now, why not just pump in Muzak to the bar that I was in, which I was a bartender? Just Muzak, just have it coming in. Piano Muzak all night long, really good stuff. Why not just do that? Because they weren't coming to hear. The people coming into our bar were not coming in to hear music. They were coming in to have an experience in humanity. They were coming in to see a human being play the piano better than anyone else they'd ever seen play it. They, didn't, they weren't there just to hear piano music. They could have done that at home. <laughs> you see these crazy airport bars now where there's no waiter, there's no human waiter, there's no human bartender you get your little app out, and all of a sudden a beer and a sandwich shows up. Absolutely no human touch. The only place this would work is in these crazy laboratories of the New World Order called the International Airport System, right? Because it's a hellish experience. And think about it. How many things we all do just because we're human? You think anybody goes to a football game? Or you think anybody would go to a football game just to sit there and count how many times the pig skin crosses you know, the stupid plane of the end zone, like a robotic arm, ink, um, ink, um, ink, um. Would anybody actually do, why not? The, the football is still crossing into the end zone. That's really exciting. That's the objective of the game, right? Can you imagine anything more ridiculous than robots playing football? Would you go to that game? And why wouldn't you? is because football is all about the human spirit pushing the human body as far as humanly possible. And that's what amazes us. And that's what's incredible. That's the miracle of life. That's the grand adventure of being human.
It's not about equity. In fact, it's just the opposite. It's about inequity sports. Who's the best at this, at this sport? Which players can take this game and take this ball beyond the boring equity of mediocrity, right? That's the whole point. And this is what these globalists, Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, these nerds, they have no idea what's really going on. And everything they're proposing, you will, oh, nothing and be happy, everything automated, robots, everything they're proposing is human free. And that's why it's not going to work. Just imagine a football game or baseball game played by robots, machine efficiency, the same stupid score, every single time score here, score there, score there, right? Every time. It would be a cold day in hell before robotic equity fills stadiums, right? The, the, the human part is what makes it interesting and what will always make it interesting. See what I'm getting at? This is how we know, friends, that they're going to fail. Even from a human point of view, we can have confidence in this. We, we, are, we are humans. Think about that. We're composed of body and soul and made in the image and likeness of God, Mr. Mr. Klaus Schwab. And guess what? We don't want anything from you. We don't want your future. We don't want your technology. We do not want your fusion. None of it. We want none of it. It comes right out of the bowels of hell. In fact, what we want is we want our kids to be able to grow up in a normal world, a human world. That's just like we did, you know? With human imperfections and hum human inequalities. These idiots don't believe in equality. Are you kidding me? They want to exploit the differences, right? They want to empower themselves by claiming to be paragons of, of, of equality when actually they're just exploiting it. They wouldn't know what to do without inequality. Look at Al Sharpton. What would he do if racism ended? He'd be out of a job, right? There's great money in this compassion. <laughs> but we want humanity. We want, we want human families again. Human kids. You know, where they weren't all perfect, where nothing was fair, nobody was equal, and everybody knew how to laugh at being human, you know? And suicide rates, when I'm a kid, suicide rates, low, <laughs> insignificant, you didn't even hear about it. Murder, rare. Crime, almost non-existent, right? Drugs, hard to find, not in demand. You see, anti-humans like Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates, they can try all day long to take our humanity away from us but they will fail. They will fail. No matter how they try to dehumanize us, they will fail because the human spirit was created by God. Just as Hitler failed, Stalin failed, and all these lunatics failed, and Klaus Schwab will fail. Now here he is, Klaus, the field marshal, you know, with his new Nazi promise of a superior humanity. Can you believe we're hearing this again? He is going to use his little computers and his chat GPT to create an Ubermensch, a Superman. I mean, give me a break, Klaus. We just went through that in the 20th century with lunatics like you. And now as we're seeing up in Canada, well, if you complain about this stuff, if you, if you don't comply, well, you're going to face imprisonment. You're going to face death. You're going to face execution. Oh, wow, something new. Well, you know what? Klaus, human beings die. And martyrdom actually proves our point. Martyrdom gives us the last word because you don't lose in martyrdom. You win. That's how the cat, that's how Christianity began on a cross. But first, before they start killing us, they're evidently going to round us up like they're doing in Canada, threatening to throw everybody in prison again. But you see, we're going to win there too, because humans always find a way to fight, even when they're confined. They fight back with astonishing resiliency. The point is, their Achilles heel, these globalist, maniacal freaks, their Achilles heel is their hatred of humanity. Humanity, because they hate God, they also hate to have to hate what God created. Their hatred of humanity is going to be their undoing. And a prison, prison bars, by the way, can't keep God out. Alexander Solzhenitsyn entered prison an atheist and left prison a Christian. Why? Because he found God in the humanity of the gulag. Darkness of the gulag, he found God. So they'll never be able to stomp out God. They'll never be able to stomp out our humanity. And sooner or later, their satanic hatred of humanity leads all men back to God. Because you realize you're looking at the face of Lucifer, well, there must be a God then. And that's where we're coming to now, friends. 
And with God's help, we will outlast these godless, warped old zombies USB'd to their computers and cell phones stuck in their heads, right? And if our humanity doesn't undo them, their agenda, our faith in God certainly will, so we need to hang on to both, you know? Just don't let them take away your soul or take away your hum humanity. So the lesson looking at someone like Klaus Schwab, my goodness, how many times have tyrants and maniacs used that kind of language? Now he's just gonna do it with technology and it's gonna fail just like they did. So the answer for all of us, stay Christian, stay alive, stay human, and God, not them, wins in the end.